Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Hayekadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of kings and Lord of lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Now, we're continuing our study in the book of Hebrews, and as we move into chapter 10 today, the writer reiterates much of what he says, and he is confirming that Jesus is the promised one, the final sacrifice, he who washes clean the conscience of all men through the forgiveness that he offers. And so after reaffirming and reestablishing these facts, in verse 22, he says, because of this, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water, which is the word of God. He continues, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. Let us not go back and let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is. But let us exhort one another, and so much the more as we see the day of the return of the Lord Jesus approaching. Now this passage really has nothing to do with a local congregation, which has been misrepresented for so long. But more to the point, it is simply stating that we need one another. Now this can take place in a local fellowship, what we would call the church today that meets on Sunday mornings. But more than that, it is a reminder that we need one another because all of us are going to face difficult times when we doubt and we worry and we need others to encourage us to get our minds off the things of this earth, off the problems of this earth, and cast our attention and our focus upon God who is in control of all things. And sometimes we become blinded by our problems and we can't see past the veil of our problems. And so we need others to help us bring down the veil so that we can look unto God who is the source and the resolver of our problems. And you should have someone in your life to help you do this, to encourage you daily. Now I, like many of you, have not been able to find this in a local fellowship. And that is very discouraging. Because the churches of today seem to be no more than religious social clubs. And so it is my prayer through this ministry that you will not each individually come here for training in the Word of God, for a positive word of exhortation each day, but that you will begin to realize that you all have something in common. You all are seeking truth, truth that you can't find anywhere else. And because of this, you have a common bond. So I would encourage you to reach out to one another. I love to hear from you, your responses on what these videos mean to you each day. And it's a source of strength and encouragement for me. But if you'll read the replies of what each of you have to say, you're all saying the same thing. And so reach out to one another. Begin to correspond with one another. Because you and I are not alone. Although we may not be able to find that support system locally that we are looking for, there are truth seekers scattered throughout the world that are coming to these videos each and every day sharing the same concerns as you. And these are your brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus who love him dearly, who love his word, and are seeking someone, anyone to preach it uncompromised and unadulterated not scared of offending others in love, all in the hopes of help forming them into the image of the person that the Lord Jesus so created them to be. It would be wonderful if each of us had this support system locally, but the Lord has done the next best thing and he's given us one another through this ministry, so let us reach out, friends, and not forsake the assembling of ourselves together, exhorting one another daily, and encouraging one another daily. And as we spoke of in a previous video, he says, For if we sin willfully, after that we've received the knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. 
In verse 31, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. This is what we are to be reminding one another of. He says in verse 35, do not cast away your confidence. In verse 36, after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and Jesus whom tarries, he will come. And the reason we are to hold fast is because the just are to live by faith. Faith is obedience. We are to live by obedience unto the God whom we serve. But if any man draws back, my soul will take no pleasure in him, says the Lord. And if he finds no pleasure in you, and you find no pleasure in him, you're certainly not going to spend eternity with him. We are not of those who draw back unto perdition, unto exclusion from salvation. But we are them that believe to the saving of the soul. Belief has the reward of saving of the soul. Drawing back has the judgment that he takes no pleasure in us. And so let each of us be careful each and every day in our walk with the Lord. Let us examine ourselves, test ourselves, improve ourselves. But let us not walk this path alone. For there are brothers and sisters in the Lord that you need, and there are brothers and sisters in the Lord that need you. So let us take this ministry to the next level. Let us become a unified family. Let us no longer be strangers, but let us become very familiar with one another, calling one another, writing one another, helping one another, and loving one another. Well, it is a true blessing of the Lord Jesus to be with you once again, to share the word of life with you. And it is my prayer today that you will walk in the joy and the blessing and the peace of the Lord Jesus. And you will bring him much pleasure as you seek to serve him so faithfully. Now, as he wills and until next time, friends, I truly love you and I'll see you on the next video.